we've had a situation before where a contemporary artist um, did not want us to exhibit their work. But we took the view that as an independent museum, it's our responsibility to show which, whoever artist it is their work in a responsible, sensitive and astute manner. We're not out for sensationalism. We're not out to challenge the, 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 uh, the wishes of individual artists. But we can't allow a situation where an artist can dictate to an independent museum its actions. We have to be judged by our actions. If we got it wrong, if we represented that artist's work insensitively or unintelligently, then we should be hung, drawn and quartered for it. But that's the challenge of a museum. I guess a bit like the Heineken advert, we reach the parts that other museums don't. We show exhibitions that other museums don't. The, the style and approach that we've just discussed in terms of social issues, which other museums don't. We bring to London artists that without us wouldn't, be, wouldn't come. So for example, we did an exhibition about Max Weber, a very famous American artist who, was, who literally brought Cubism to America. Never had an exhibition in London. We produce scholarly catalogues so that there is a serious addition to the library of an artist with Ben Uri's name on it. We are involved in social activities and outreach activities that are expansive. We are involved in well-being. But more than anything else, without Ben Uri, then the whole spotlight, for example, on not just Jewish artists, but emig emigre artists as a whole. So we've shown African artists, we've shown you know, African video artists, we've shown Korean artists, we've shown Ghanaian artists. This year we did an exhibition about the Notting Hill Carnival. We are completely diverse. We believe that art and museums can be a vehicle for good in society, and it's a vehicle for social integration. But where we make the big difference is not here in this space, but it's in our strategy going forward. If you accept government figures and national museum figures, there is a fundamental blockage in the system. And that is that minority communities, minority communities tend to be emigre communities, do not visit museums and galleries in the same proportion as your core standard white British citizen. Reasons, not for now. Solutions, not just to have an exhibition addressing the Bengali community or the Polish community or the Sudanese community. We think it's much deeper than that. We want to share our space with these communities on a rotating basis. We want to be in a situation where there is a museum of migration focusing on art and identity from the turn of the 20th century, so it's a modern and contemporary story, and we want to have a situation where there are 10 different migrant communities having space for three or four months at a time, telling their story of their journey to London, their triumphs and their disasters. But whatever it is, it's their story. So that people can actually understand. How many people know when they see an Asian, whether they're from Uganda or not, how many people today remember Idi Amin? I don't think so many. Certainly not under the 30s. We have the opportunity, if we can get the support, to create an institution that incorporates Benuri, all the different facets of our museum, all the high art, all the high scholarship, all the community outreach, and this museum allowing, on a rotating basis, 10 different communities at a time just simply to tell their stories of their journey to London and we, together with them, we will curate an exhibition, an art exhibition as well. We won't tell their stories. That's not our job. Our job is to offer our friends and colleagues and brothers and sisters space in our museum so that when they go to their communities, they are saying, come and see us. The, the mileage, the legs that this formula has is 
is a long and, and sustainable. Where it will take us to? The answer is, I don't know. And I don't think I need to know. Because even if I guessed, I would get it wrong. What is important is that it opens up so many different avenues for individual communities to work together, to respect each other, to understand each other better, and to set an example about social integration. Because what are museums for? If you think about when I was a kid growing up, who were, the, who were the, those who were considered to be above? They were role models. The vicar, the religious leader, the rabbi in my case, the bank manager, the doctor, the politician. Think about it. The religious leader, do I have to say, do, do I have to discuss how religious leaders have been discredited in certain areas? The bankers, I don't think I need to talk about the bankers. And then you've got politicians. Where is the left? Where are is society's role models? Museums can be a bastion of respectability. It can be a bastion of forward-looking liberal approach that recognises all the different challenges, recognises that at the edges of each part of society there is fungus. But the core is good. And if Benary can make that contribution, because we're starting afresh in our new millennium, we don't have that space. If we had a 60,000 square foot building already and it was fixed assets, we couldn't do it. That's why Benary is in this wonderful position, because we have the collection, we have the programming, we have the vision, we have the ability, we have the people, and we're ready to fulfill that future. Well, I think, first of all, the emigre experience is universal. That's the most important part. It doesn't matter, frankly, whether you come by first class from New York or Moscow to London or you come on a boat. It's, it's universal because the upheaval of life and the insecurity and uncertainty of the future make it an extremely traumatic experience. Is the message universal? I think if we can convince people that the experience is universal, I think by definition they will accept that the message is universal. And that's the key to the future of Benary. Because if communities understand that actually we all experienced the same process, we all understand the insecurities in the future when you are a minority, because if you are a minority, you are at risk. Just think, just think of schools. Who do bullies bully? They bully those who are usually standalone, weak or nervous, but principally and most definitely where they're not surrounded by friends to defend them. So by being a minority, it is an insecure existence. And what we have to try and do is to give people the confidence to understand that certainly in this country, in this remarkable, unbelievable country of ours called Great Britain, the society is such that if you put in, you will get out. Not true in every society, but in this country it is. And that's why Britain is great.